carry about the transmission lines. Um, we have a room full of people, um, and uh, judging by their comments, I think most of those were pro underground transmission lines. Am I misstating that? Not by my recollection. Okay. All right. So, so. Um, we don't know, we didn't know where the city council was on this issue, so we just thought we'd formally uh, make a proposal to the city council that they consider putting a bond on the November ballot. And that would have to happen sooner than later in order for all that to happen because there's got to be financial statements made and, and so people can make an informed decision uh, to vote on whether or not they want to uh, fund underground portion. And I think if I'm we were talking about just the city's portion, is that correct? Is that what everybody understood? Yep. Yep. That's all we have control of, obviously, is the city's portion of the underground part of it. Um, and, and that, in my mind, is a key part of the whole thing. The whole thing is coming through the North Hills and coming around. So, so um, I don't know that anybody wants to see the transmission lines going past through the North Hills, in my mind, but they do. So, it would affect the property if you just talk about it. Yeah, yeah, that would affect them too. So, anyway, so that, that was the crux of the issue. Did you have any staff report together? Was that? That was me. All right. I'll turn the time over to you then. Go ahead. Okay. Um, really, timing is of the essence because if you uh, are going to ask for the divine power to carry the power lines as part of the additional use permit, um, you can't just drop that on them at the last minute. So if you think this is really going to be something that you're going, that could potentially be part of what you're going to ask the UI power to do, you need to probably see if your elected officials are willing to even go there. Mm -hmm. So um, really the question is, should Heber City fund the undergrounding of the proposed UI power transmission lines? It's not going to be an easy um, thing for you or the council to answer. Um, you've heard from the people who live along and around the power lines, the proposed power lines, who definitely would love people and who don't live along there to help fund those power lines. Um, you, you have not heard from the people who live on the other side of the city who don't even drive through that part of the city where the power lines are going to be that they probably could care less um, and would not be interested in funding that. So all I'm pointing out is there are two sides of the story. I know the, the power board is sensitive to not wanting rates to go up, and that's why they said, look, if you want underground as a city and it's important for you to bear that cost, go for it. Um, uh, and I'm just pointing out that it, there's two sides of the story. It's, it's going to be difficult. To, to say no, or it's going to be difficult to say yes to do it. Um, but my point when we talked a few weeks ago was that if, if it's of interest, you need to bring it up sooner than later, because if you bring it up later, the answer is going to be it's too late. Uh -huh. so. Good. Could I get a little background if you'd like? Could you go up there? Sure. Why don't you sit right up there at that table? Well, whatever. I'm sorry, but she wants to be in the camera. Too, so just sit there at that table. You well, you need to get microphone. in the just microphone. Because, uh, my brother's on the Hammer Power Light Board, and we've had some discussion about it, and I have an interest in it a little bit. The deal is, as I understand it, the City Board of Adjustment did a, allow them the use to go through that area in the city. And so, or is that not quite right? right. No. Yeah, the, 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 the Board of Adjustment actually continued it. Oh, I didn't know that. And, and what ended up <laughs> happening is the council, the city council said, hey, um, we prefer the planning commission to make this decision. So the council actually changed the law for who, for which board approves it and, and put it upon the shoulders of the planning commission to approve it. So, so that's not what's in front of us tonight. No. Not tonight, no. This is just a, a decision for the planning commission to make a recommendation to the city council, for the city council to consider paying 
for undergrounding. So why is the, not that I mind at all, but why is the Planning Commission involved in a city bonding decision? Well, because, to do with planning? well, it, it's not, but it is, and here's why. <laughs> because potentially the Planning Commission could say, look, as part of your permit, we would like you to underground the, uh, the transmission lines. But the Planning Commission doesn't hold the pocket, the council does. So uh, Heberlite Power would not be the one bearing that cost. It would actually be the city. That's the part we want to right. verify. And so, so it is not the, this board that would decide whether um, the cost at all. Right. So the Planning Commission's request to, under, to potentially underground that would be moot because they're not the holders of the checkbook. So. The, the thing tonight was for the Planning Commission to make the recommendation that the City Council actually have that discussion about. Their role could be as a Planning Commission to not allow it to go through if it wasn't on the ground. That's really the, the right. nexus of why you get the way in. That might be the recommendation. Yeah. Ultimately, we can do what Yeah, you can do, you can do what you want. So, but as I understand it again, that the Heater Power might have a contract with Rocky Mountain Power, and that transmission line will be built unless they don't get to go where they need it to. The power companies only have to build it above ground. Any cost additional to put it underground has to be borne by those that want it underground. If Midway wants it underground through Midway, whatever. Right. Now he's not inclined to do it for them. A lot of discussion about it. They could change. But that's what we're talking about. But we want to pay. But it's a lot of money. I think it's very Yeah, the planning commission's is four million a mile or something. Yeah, like yeah, it's about four to one. Yeah. And the planning commission tonight was just talking about it. And if they choose, they would just make a recommendation that the council have that discussion about what it would take. Because we already have a public hearing. People yeah. have power sitting right there where you are. So we've already had this discussion with. Public and Elon Tower, and uh, and they tended to want to be funded. Those that were all, here, all the people that were here, yeah. Mm -hmm. But like Toy says, there's always two sides of their story. You get the people coming out where it's affecting them in their backyard. You know, that's where you get the people to come out. Anyway, generally, that's that's all I know. <laughs> so 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 because of that, that's why we thought maybe we should put it, ask the city council well, to consider it. That's all. Yeah. Basically, we're just saying maybe we should consider letting people go to the program. Let the people go. Then, so what are the lines that you're floating on the voters? They made a decision 75 days prior to the election. Prior to the election. That's when the petition has to be the, to the lieutenant governor's office. So, we're talking about the school, they've probably been working on theirs for a while if they intend to. Could be a lot of work in a really quick amount of time to get that because we're coming up on 75 days for the place. Well, the Marmack City Council is July 16, which we, you know, we could put it on with a 24 hour notice if that's what we do. It just I mean, seems like a big enough issue that, that know, the people should decide. They should decide. Yeah, because if, if the council decides, you're going to be bad guys no matter what, right? Into that. <laughs> Tracy, I think if you pay attention to any social media, which maybe is what Tracy's going to speak to now, but if you pay attention to social media, uh, and I do a little bit, but I think most of the stuff on social media is, is in favor of bearing, am I right? It, yeah, it's hard to tell. I mean, it really is hard to tell on this because there's a lot of people that are going to be directly affected by this that haven't weighed in at all, but being a real estate broker in this town, um, my concern as well is the property values will be affected by these lines. So, you know, that's also revenue that you guys get from property taxes that, I mean, it's gonna affect people's property values. There's no doubt about it. One thing I just wanted to talk to you about, though, it's just something to consider. 
is we're going to do this. I think there was only like a mile that was even in Heber City on the north side that was in the North Fields area. Yeah, the total, the total of it, it's is really a mile and a half or something at the most of, of Heber City area. Um, I, I would want you to consider having them bury the lines on Highway 40 into Heber City. So Coyote Lane in. I think a lot more of our citizens drive in to town and hate those things coming in from Coyote Lane in. So that might be something to consider, to go, look, guys, let's go take them, make them rip those things out and bury it from Coyote Lane coming in. Now you're really changing the whole feel of driving into Heber City on that north end. Um, or we have to, you know, and I'm, or I'm saying those developers that just got approved on those ivory homes and everything, maybe they would match funds because it would be burying the lines in front of their developments, which would be a huge asset to them. So we could be thinking about this a little bit more creatively than just saying uh, people pay for a mile and a half of, of whatever's left in Heber City. I'd love to see them rip out what they already put in and, and get those developers along Highway 40, even Sorensen going up further if he wants, let's, get some matching donations from the developers if this passes, you know, in on a bond election. But you're right. I mean, as Tony said, I mean, it, it could go either way, but the people get to vote. And then we really are getting everybody's vote and not just the people showing up to a meeting. Um, but I think more people would be interested if we pulled out what's already up because it's just so detrimental to the entrance to our, our city, I think. All right, thank you. Okay. That's a good thought. I, I, I don't know how I'm inclined to do a piece of time. So, <clears throat> so this meeting is dated August, August 22nd, approximately. August 22nd would be the deadline. Um, Hebrew Light and Power hopes to be on the August 27th agenda for their second public hearing to get their CUP. Um, the next council meeting is July 16th. July 16th. And then the next one after that is going to probably be August 3rd or something. Yeah, but if, I mean, if, if the, the, late, the longer it waits, the less likely it is to really. Well, so it's really nice to go. The second one will be before August 27th. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let me ask you a stupid question. If we use this uh, bury the line and the citizens bear the additional cost, is that through ratepayers or is that through tax? That's through Heber City. Through Heber, Heber City increasing property taxes to pay for the line to be buried. Some tax, some fee, some you know, it would be so it would be a bond election. Well, the bond case. would be the citizens. Anytime the city imposes a cost, it is a tax. Well, but it wouldn't I be. I know they use the word fee, but it if, if it's a bond, it would be directly a payment of the bond, and it'd have to be a proper general obligation bond. August 6th and August 20th are your two city officials. Okay. So, just a couple thoughts that I've had since we talked about this last time. I think that. A lot of people in the community would probably love to see the power lines buried. But I don't I know that we would have a lot of success getting just a portion of it buried right in the middle and then seeing power lines on both sides. Um, I don't know that most people in Heber City would care enough to have paid for the bond unless it was more of a county wide bond to pay for the burial. But, but we don't have any control. I know, but yeah. I'm just saying push that on to the city council. But I think that we need to recommend that they work with Wasatch County to get it passed as a county bank bond. Stacy, there was actually a conversation in the last meeting with that public hearing yeah. about that very subject, not just handling it as a key but as a city thing, but also having the other kids with this I don't know. I mean I know you're under the wire and I don't know if people could get everyone together and talk about it. I haven't been in all of the meetings or all of the discussion on the county side. I just don't 
see most of the Hebrew citizens voting to bury just those blue lines. Which might be beyond the same ballot as the school. So just to clarify, we're only discussing if this should go on the ballot, which there's, it's a no-brainer. The, the citizens should be able to vote for it. So right. I'm going to tell you, personally, I'm, I'm against it, okay? Yeah, sure, I'd like to see them underground, but $4 million to $1 million for every mile, and you start looking at what it restricts you for, you know, if there is a problem, to fix it. I mean, if, if you look into it, it, it's quite quite a bit of money. It's more than just four million, because then the maintenance on it is yeah. It, 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 everything's there. And I yeah. I think that the citizens need to speak. When we were in the meeting here, we were full of all the people that were directly affected by it, which to me is a small percentage of the whole valley. And if the whole valley decides that that's what we do, then that's what we do. For people who own multiple properties in the city, it's a pretty big effect on you. If you start looking at the school district bonds and then you look at this, that's going to be a significant amount of money. So all, all I'm saying is that personally, I'm against it. If we were going to vote, should we go underground? I would vote no. But if we're voting that it goes to an election, that's exactly what needs to happen so that the people or the citizens of the city have, the have the chance to speak. And it's not like we're imposing something on it because we have a room full of people here of 100 people a month ago and they, and they were now it's a small majority and i want i think we should be directed by what that was and let the entire community and if they choose to do it then that that's the voice of the people i agree because people should have that opportunity to speak absolutely so I, i'm just saying i don't think i mean we just move forward let's put it on the ballot it's more work we already have staff that can do that and that's just what happens so. But, but I agree with Stacy that I, I think if it's going to be on the ballot, it should be a county way. But, and but, should, but we, but we, but we can't. can't. So we don't have any control over that. We don't have control of the city's portion. Yeah. And so it could be sit in the county so, all the way through. So talk to the county and have the county agree and put it all together? Maybe. I don't know. I think once can people I see the real numbers are educated, it's going to be really hard for them to say, yeah, I'm willing to spend $40 million for that. I think they're like, you know what? I think I can live with it. I know that the property values could could go down with that, but I mean, I mean, I don't see what people are going to lose money in their value of their home right now. But at least they will have their say. Exactly. Can I say one more? One thing? more thing. Make it quick. Okay. <laughs> no, this is. Can this you make is, it quick? This is Stacy's exact point. Okay, there are uh, landowners in Wasatch County right along that route where Heber City comes in and out of. They've already said if they will not give an easement to Rocky Mountain Power if they don't bury the line. If they bury the line, they will give it freely. But if they are forced to give them, you know, over uh, above ground, they will charge them for that easement. So there's some of the costs right there of some of this land. So, you know, the North Fields is such a sensitive area right there already, and there are landowners in the county that have said, if you bury it, I won't even charge you for an easement. I just like to see what those costs are because we're talking a significant amount of money and if not we have public right of ways on the roads and if that if they want to see it on the road then we'll put it on the road. I'm That's just I'm, I'm just telling you what other landowners have said in the county meetings. When we that's all meeting, I'm that's yeah. all I'm sharing information yeah. on that. I'm not but so I foresee that North Fields being buried anyway because those landowners don't that's, want it above ground. So. Yeah, and that's great. And everyone votes on it. I'm just saying, these few people can't decide. It has to be the people that decide. Amen. And I'm just saying, though, that I doubt you'll see lines come up and go back down. We'll see what buried. The, I think that corridor right there is the most sensitive in the whole valley. And those landowners don't want it above ground. Thank you. All right. So, um, anybody have anything else they want to add? I agree. The people need to be able to do this. Yeah, I agree. I can agree more. It's all about what the people feel. Let them spur. Okay. Represent the people. We don't represent our own personal interests. Okay, who would like to make a motion? Um, I'd like to make a motion. Yeah, I'm not sure that this approval 
motion in the staff report is worded correctly. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll add that. All right, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I, I move that we put the positive recommendation to the city council to issue general obligation bonds to fund the undergrounding of the proposed Huber Light Power Transmission Lines um, no, no. Huber City, and that we um, encourage the council to work with Wasatch County Council to issue a similar bond for the portions of the lines going through Wasatch County. Via election on November 9th. Yes, I, right, through the, the issuance of general obligation bonds that would be That part clear. Okay. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that was unanimous. All's in your court.